डेटवेस गया स्टोर स्टोरिंग डेटवेस गया ना स्टोरिंग स्टोरिंग फाइल नेम केले सक्सेस मेक डेट वाइज एंड गिव स्टार्ट सो सिंस लास्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स वेदर दी थिंग्स वी रिटर्न इज व्यूएबल लेट अस से so in last few lectures we are trying to understand the properties of xm and in that discrete time fourier transform which provides me an alternative mapping of xm xm the first origin the signal available in original form is xn versus n that is for every n i know value of xn and i am trying to view it with a different angle hoping that that alternate view will provide me the idea about the properties in more exhibitory manner since transform is an invertible mapping transform doesn't add anything into the original signal it is only a way of looking in which the properties are of the signal only are exhibited in a manner which an individual can perceive well so discrete time fourier transform is one such way of mapping then discrete time fourier transform is not so easy to understand because of the fact that it is a continuous function and it is not so easy to have to visualize inverse dtft as the original signal because it becomes an integration discrete fourier transform is something different to which we are not yet going what we are talking i am sure that even though you might have heard me for last two lectures hardly you might have understood what is the theme of our talk <laughs> the theme of our talk is an attempt to understand dtft therefore we are going for piece wise dtft it is not discrete fourier transform that concept is not yet there we are not going in that direction accidentally that and our discussion may coincide but that is not the purpose what we are trying xn is having some kind of variation some kind of relationship with respect to n so for every n there is a value of xn then that i am trying to look at by decomposing it into multiple sequences x0 n x1 n x2 n like x m n trying to decompose it into multiple sequences multiple as i may please but with a condition that each of the such each of such sub sequences is having a particular manner of variation x n which is a single sequence is considered to be made up of summation of multiple sub sequences but the multiple such sub sequences are not random sequences these are some fixed type sequences or fixed variation sequences or predefined sequences xn is being looked at as summation of multiple as we desire multiple sub sequences which are predefined and the question is can i do so every xn whatever it may be can it be defined can it be described by a set of multiple sub multiple predefined sub sequences when i say predefined each of these sub sequence is written by a single expression 
Each of these are deterministic sequences. And if I view that summation, then I can process it very easily by when I consider when I want to process original is with me original can be considered as sum of multiple when I process it of few I may increase the amplitude for few I may decrease the amplitude for few I may have shift phase shift variation so that original is sum of few of that I change few and I again sum so I find that original change just like bass triple just like basketball, you have got a uh, filters and you can adjust the gates, <coughs> just like that. So how I look at that, then Xn, I, again now, Xn can be considered, you are considering some Xn? <laughs> Xn can be considered to be two dimensional sequence. It may be one dimension is a special case, but two dimensional means what whenever xn is there for every n you should have a 2d plane in mind just like you should get a template like this whenever xn the moment at which xn you you view xn you listen xn you write xn you talk xn you think xn you dream xn <laughs> At every such operation, reading, writing, talking, listening, thinking, dreaming, at every point of time, whenever you come across XN in either of these forms, you should have in your mind that XN is something just it's a square template, a playing card, a square playing card. Maybe uh, at some games you get a set of cards. A square playing card with these axes. And Xn should be looked at as a square white playing card with this black thin axis and a red point here. Maybe in some other case. Not a red point also. Yes. Not there will be problem because you will not understand what. So you should a red zero, a red one. A red two. What is XN? Or X your visualization for XN should be such a, a white card. X and Y axis and a red N. So that red N indicating you the value of XN. It's a position in a 2D plane. If it is one dimensional, then it would be here as a special case. 0, 1, 2, like this. It can be anything anywhere here. And here is a special case. Maybe three or maybe two here. Maybe three here. Are you getting me? So the moment at which you come across X in one of these six ways, you should have this visualization. Right? Now what we are thinking? This is for Xn as a sum. This is for Xn as a sum. This is n for some lit n little all right. Then and these are the cards. See, the cards are not to be purchased. The cards are to be thought. You can think thousand cards, one lakh cards. There's no bar, right? So a sequence of cards. Everywhere there is position for every card. There is pos when I write n, it is position as well as position number, so I get both things immediately. <coughs> right? 
then there is one set of cards. There is one set of cards. This is one original sequence. Then one set of cards. Next set of cards. Next set of cards. Next set of cards. Set of cards. All are infinite in number. Since it is only to be thought, I can consider these infinite and these infinite. There is no, no bar. And what is happening now? The, the first set of cards is such that for all ends, for all ends, this is actually putting here n is all right, but on this set, on this set, I should write something. This is actually xn. <coughs> so it, I can be see, since it is not to be embossed and printed. The question is no, 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 sir. You are embo embossed n earlier. That now that embossing is to be wiped out. Then the card should be what we can say wasted. It is not like that. It is just on a mental plane. It means it is just like <laughs> earlier when there was photography. And if the photo is not good, then one has to again have a flash. Then that time the photo film was wasted. So that time it was a economic consideration. But now with the digital things there, wipe out, they have next. Similarly, so it is only for we to write. So rather than writing only n here with a red, you should have x n. It's a big, it's a big card now, and x is small, indicating your position. So x. So x0 here, x1 here, maybe x2 here, x3 here, by the position, <laughs> you get it immediately. Then, the another set of cards is coming, that is x0n, are you getting me? This is the first set, next set, x0n, means x01, x02, x03, x04, like that, x00, like that. What is, the, what is the condition there? Since it is x0, since it is x0, for all n's, it would be constant. Means x, x, x0, 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 is this. x0, 0. Similarly, it is always here only. Are you getting me? It doesn't move. x0, 0 doesn't move at all x0, 0, the first subsequence or 0th subsequence is such that it doesn't move along with n. It is a constant. It is called as DC value actually. So first subsequence corresponding to 0 doesn't move at all. It is having some value everywhere. The next subsequence, next subsequence is x1, x1n. How x1 is moving? X1 n can have some value. X1 n can have some value at n equal to 0. Then I write the movement of X1 n. So somewhere it is X1 0. Right? Then, <coughs> the moment at which x10 gets defined, then what we are having? A circle of the radius is to be found out. So, a circle of this radius is always to be everywhere. For every x1 value, there would be this element. It would be on this circle only. And it will move from this position by some fixed angle by some fixed angle. It is very small because I am having multiple such x1, x2, x3, x4 up to xm. If m is kept, if xm minus 1, if m is 1 lakh, then the angle is 2 pi upon 1 lakh. If m is 1 crore, angle is 2 pi upon 1 crore. Is it right? If m is 1, <coughs> the angle is 2 pi, that's all. So only 1. If m is 2, angle is pi. So, x1, 0. Then x1, 1, from this position, x1, 1, x1, 2, like this. 
then x2 0 may be at any position then what is x2 1 x2 1 would, would be on the circle for there would be some value of x2 0 some value of x3 0 so it would be on the circle with the angle double than this so I am trying to look at this as com comprised of 0 and subsequence, first subsequence, second subsequence, third subsequence, and 99,999, 99,999, 99,999, that subsequence, right? Each of the subsequences moves in a predefined manner on the circle. And what, what uh, flexibility we have? We can have x0,0 zero, zero can be anything, x0,1 can be anything, x0,2 can be anything. Then you have got 1 lakh degrees of freedom. You can have those many combinations such that <coughs> summation of all x00, x01, x02 up to x0, 99,999 equals to x0. x00, x10, x20 up to x99,999 or xm minus 10 sums to this. X, x01, x11, x21 up to xm minus 1 sums to this. So by having uh, about 1 lakh you means you are trying to express you are trying to express xn which was I was having for every n there was one xn for every n there was having one xn that I am trying to represent by alternative set of 1 lakh numbers 1xn I am trying to represent by alternative set of 1 lakh numbers. If n is infinite, if n is infinite, in that case I also need infinite m. But except otherwise that I can look x then what we can have I would give you very simple thing <coughs> let xn be infinite let xn be infinite okay but moving in a predefined order xn is such that xn is sequence which is like this 1 1 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 1 1 1 minus are you getting me 1 1 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 like this or if we want to be if we if we want that it should be symmetric around 0 then there is one more better way it is like this Infinite points, which has got infinite points. 
points, right? From minus infinity to infinity. No question of uh, one side limit also. Now, this Xn, which is an infinite log sequence, log sequence, but it's a deterministic sequence. Means, I know, whenever I get value of n, I know what is Xn. It's a deterministic, but infinite long sequence. Now, the question is, can this sequence be represented by some of, some subsequences such that each of these subsequences is moving in a particular order? How will you do that? <laughs> so what would be x zero n in this case? X zero n. It is a DC value will be zero. X zero n will be zero in this case. It will not be a constant term because average is zero. Then x one n, x two n, x three n, x four n, like that. What you can do, think this is a discrete time square wave. That way, this is a discrete time square wave. We are attempting, so what is the answer now? This Xn, can it be expressed as approximately at least? Because when we do, we do not have a infinite uh, components, it will be approximate. So, can it be expressed as summation of summation of m equal to zero till capital M minus one, m equal to zero till capital M minus 1 x of M e raised to z Positive as well as negative. <coughs> as well as negative. Let us right now not come confuse that. Into two pi upon m C we are at a blocking stage. That blocking stage is despite very rigorous attempt to, to teach, we are not achieving the objective of learning. Discrete time Fourier transform can be found by everybody and hardly understood by anybody. DTFT is something which everybody can, everybody can find and nobody can understand. That's that kind of what we can say contradiction we don't want. It's illusion. We don't want that. What we want, what I mean by decomposition one sequence xn is being looked as is being looked as summation of multiple subsequences such that each of these subsequences is a predefined sequence each of these subsequences is having a constant magnitude and varying angle 
with respect to n such that for every n all these values add up to give xn all these values add up to give xn so the idea is clear or not idea may not uh, still may not be that much clear xn is like this always xn is a discrete time square wave how can you express it as a function of n n divided by n modulo 3 something like that and after writing that you would be finding dtft and dtft what you find will have interesting pattern Because you are straight away having 
Think of our plate. Think of our plate. X0 is where? Here. Where is X1? On the other side. Think of plate. Think of Here, x0, x1, here, x2, means you can consider this to be rotating from here to here, right? From here to here, okay? From here again to here. So, this xn doesn't need to be decomposed further. This Xn doesn't need to be decomposed further because it is such a special sequence which has already got or which is comprised of a single component which is moving with a predefined way along with N. Means it is already moving on a circle of a predefined value. Then you may have various ways with which you can look at it. You may have, let us say, like this, for x equal to 0 it is 1, for here it is 2, for here it is 4, 1, 2, 4, for here it is 3, for 4 it is 0, and from 5 again it is again repeating, 1, 2, 4, 3, 0 and again repeating, this is how it will look like, 1, 2, 4, 3, 0, again repeat. Again. Right? So, by this I don't get a proper idea about the nature of Excel. But, this now is to be thought of. This is to be thought of. What? Multiple waveforms, multiple waveforms or multiple subsequences which vary in a predefined way. So ideally speaking, Ideally speaking, every Xn, every Xn can be considered to be thought, and that is our DTFT formula. What is DTFT formula? X of omega is summation of n equal to minus infinity to infinity. X of n e raised to minus z. X of omega is for this this can be found out if I know Xn completely to completely know Xn either I have to know the formula when I say to know Xn complete completely when I can claim to know Xn completely? <laughs> no, knowing Xn completely means what? Knowing it? No, no, no.
एक्सेल इज टू डायमेंशनल वी आर नाउ कंसिडरिंग दैट प्रिजम्पन इज ऑलरेडी वेल नोन टू अस एक्स एन इज टू डायमेंशनल दैट इज वेरी क्लियर बट नोइंग एक्स एन कंप्लीटली मीन्स नोइंग वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स एन फॉर ऑल एंस Knowing values of x n for all n, when that is possible? Knowing values of x n for all n, when that is possible? If there is a formula for x of n, if n is infinite, or I know formula means what? Again, formula means what? Is, what we claim by knowing formula knowing some coefficient knowing some constants and the way in which those are bound if i say that xn is infinitely long then i must know the formula which relates xn to n and if i want to say that xn is infinitely long and there is no relationship between xn and n then what then it is something which is beyond my capacity because i must know infinite values knowing infinite values is not is simple it is just impossible so if i want an infinite sequence then i must know the relationship between xn and n. so in that case xn must be a deterministic function of n and if there is no such relationship you can have random xn versus n then when can you know it if they are finite either we must have, means we must have xn either deterministic or finite or both if it is random as well as infinite it is out of question a random even if everybody is able to understand this statement that a random and infinite xn is beyond perception obviously that is valid if one is able to perceive other three combinations are you getting me do you have if a question is asked do you appreciate the significance of the statement that a random and infinite length xn is beyond perception that means when we say the significance of something beyond perception is relevant if something is within perception if everything is beyond perception in that situation saying that this is beyond my perception doesn't mean anything that is life of an individual after death is beyond perception of beyond my perception that is significant if life till death is within my perception if that is also not there then the statement becomes irrelevant i am sure that you must have also noted the numbers of absent students is it why not then i what i do i will hey, next time i will take I, we should not waste time in this right now so this x of omega i, I again repeat this x of omega ideally applies for all if if all xn are known there will be some x of omega if all xn are known there will be some x of omega all xn can be known if xn are finite or if xn are deterministic or if xn are both if xn is infinite and non deterministic or if x is infinite and random does it mean that that will not have x of omega if xn is 
infinite long sequence and random sequence. Then when we say random, one may say that it is bounded or unbounded. Let us say it is bounded sequence. It can be bounded as well as random. It can be bounded as well as deterministic. So if you are thinking of a bounded sequence, so if xn is an infinitely long bounded but unknown sequence, are you getting me? If xn is an infinitely long bounded but unknown sequence, in that case, will x omega exist? There will be some, but that statement is insignificant because xn is unknown. So it will have some x of omega that need not be known, that cannot be known. Are you getting me? x of omega, discrete time Fourier transform. infinite length but deterministic still it is fully known but if it is of infinite length and non-deterministic it cannot be fully known therefore its DTFT as such is not that way significant its DTFT as such is not that way significant is it clear? So, in that context, discrete time Fourier transform, even though, even though discrete time Fourier transform is continuous, when it is continuous, it means that it is collection of uncountable infinite points. DTFT is a collection of uncountable infinite points because for every omega there is value of x of omega. For all practical purposes, for all practical purposes, I can say that whenever I am having practical situation, either x in is finite or x in is known or x in is deterministic. If it is not described by a function, then when it is finite, I can say that the finite xn can always be represented by a set of capital N equations. So I can always say that fin finite xn is always deterministic. Do we agree or not? Finite xn. I mean, what is the relationship between x and n? That, what is the relationship? x0 is 3, x1 is 4, x2 is 7, x3 is 9. E is the relationship. And since it is finite, 